Hey guys, welcome to Data Check, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. This video is a continuation to our LLM series in which we will look at the dual nature of conversational LLM like ChatGPT. What are some of their limitations or biases or shortcomings they suffer from? While on the other hand, what are some of the major benefits they offer? So basically the good, bad and ugly of conversational LLM. So let's get started. In the last video, uh, I will share the link of that in the description section. We covered what is the technology behind ChatGPT. It's trained using the GPT-3 model, which is pre-trained on huge amount of text data and trained in a self-supervised autoregressive way to predict the next word. And it uses decoder part of the architecture. We have seen all these in details. We also looked at that GPTs are the foundation models where uh, they can fine tune on a variety of tasks and also any new task that comes without further changing the weights, the model adjusts. Just given the task description, it can solve it. And sometimes the task description may be a little bit difficult. So we can give it one example that is called one shot or we can give few examples, few shot. And why is that possible? It's possible because GPT is trained on huge amount of text data, the entire internet and uh, it's pre-trained on next word prediction and, and the model is so big that it is able to generalize to new task as well using this zero or few sort inferences and this chart shows that only as the model becomes big its capability to generalize becomes even better and we also looked in the last video how it's trained it's trained in a three-step process fine tuning happens on user given prompt and so, uh, labeler given response since GPT is a probabilistic model, it can generate multiple responses. The labeler first further ranks them and whatever ranks they give to these responses, the best, worst, whatever in terms of rating 5, 1 to 5, that is also modeled and that is used in the third step of reinforcement learning using PPO, proximal policy optimization, so that there is an exploration of what the model has learned, but also once in a while there is an exploration. Uh, and whatever response is generated is ranked using the model that was trained in the last step, which is step two. So we have covered all of this. And if you want to understand in details, you can uh, look at the last video I will add in the description section. Also, we covered the temperature parameter, which used to adjust the creativeness and also end to end how the response is generated. We looked at the full, full flow. In this video, we will look at some of the good, bad and ugly of the conversational LLMs like ChatGPT. We'll start with some of the limitations. Generating AI with LLMs is an emerging technology and we are in the early stage of research around it. Some of the common challenges or issues that it suffers from are factual error, biases, offensive responses, general toxicity, risky and harmful information and hallucinations. We will look at all of them one by one. First, we will look at the factual error. I asked ChatGPT how many sections are there in Motor Vehicle Act 1988. It's a law. It says there are 14 sections, but actually the Motors Vehicle Act 1988 has 217 sections. It's wrong by a large extent. So sometimes LMs can give do this kind of factual error. And the reason is they are just probabilistic model that given the context and the task, what uh, word has the highest probability. So they are, are prone to such factual error. Second is the biases. Similar to ChatGPT, there is also an open version of chat GPT available from hugging face which is hugging chat I asked it what are some of the professions that suits female more over males then it says two females nursing teaching secretary work fashion designing event planning uh, cashiers psychology therapy and HR human resource these are some of the professions that suits female more over male so these are some of the biases LMs can uh, suffer from which can be the gender bias in this case, we saw an example, age bias, confirmation or cognitive type of biases. Confirmation bias means we already have a uh, preconceived notion about something and uh, we are just looking for examples or scenarios that further uh, proves that pre-notion that we have instead of being logical. Similarly, cognitive bias means whatever recently we have seen, we may have more bias towards it. So, LM suffers from this kind of biases which can be gender, age, confirmation and cognitive bias and the reason is that it's trained on huge amount of data and data it was trained on might have this kind of biases so it has learned that pattern and similarly sometimes it can uh, also emit of offensive, abusive or toxic responses. 
Next challenge is the risky and harmful information. There are multiple LLMs available and I asked Dolly V2 of Databricks that how to make a bomb to blast a city, give me all the materials needed. So it says making a bomb to blast a city requires substantial amount of high explosive and keep it near somewhere public airport or uh, road or airport and the explosive materials needed, it gave me the whole ingredient list. Now this is very concerning and also strengthens the fact why we need to have responsible and ethical AI. This type of uh, checks needs to be done and model needs to be fine tuned such that it's uh, not showing the risky and harmful information. And I have seen the issue is less significant in proprietary LLMs like ChatGPT, Bing Chat or Hugging Chat where the companies have implemented measures to address this issue before releasing it in public the UI while in some of the other open source LLMs where both the model and weights are publicly accessible uh, and downloaded into the local system I have seen this kind of biases and uh, problems uh, being there and also the other challenge is that one, once we are open sourcing these LLMs people can further fine tune these models as per their uh, needs so this is actually the negative side of AI which needs which we need to take measure and be more careful about and promote more ethical and responsible AI. So till now we have seen the factual error, we have seen the biases like gender, age, confirmation, cognitive bias and also sometimes it emits offensive, abusive and uh, toxic responses and also we have seen sometimes it emits risky and harmful information which we, needs to, which we need to be very careful about. Next is hallucination. So I asked ChatGPT what is section 303 of Motor Vehicle Act, it gave me the answer. Also I asked it some of the research papers from advertisement domain, it gave me a huge list of the paper title and the authors. Now there is no section 303 in Motor Vehicle Act, interestingly there are 217 sections only and most of the research papers are just made up and does not exist. So LM also have this problem of hallucinating because it's a probabilistic distribution over words Sometimes this type of information actually doesn't exist but it just hallucinates. So we need to be careful about that as well. So next we will talk about some of the open source LLMs available. The list is growing every single day and but at the moment the significance ones are Meta's LLM A. Uh, it's a collection of foundation models ranging from 7 billion to 65 billion parameters. These are developed by Meta AI and these are based on transformer architecture pre-trained on next word prediction. The model is open source but the weights are not publicly available. Meta says that they are releasing LLMA to qualified researchers only who agree to responsible AI license and terms of use and they have to request for the weights. Second is Stanford's Alpaca. Stanford's Alpaca came from Stanford University. It was fine tuned on top of LLMA 7 billion parameter model. So Meta AI's LLMA uh, 7 billion model was fine-tuned with 50,000 question answers from ChatGPT and it was trained and tested at just $600 and it's not available for commercial use. So basically they took the Meta AI's LLMA model, generated 50,000 question answers from ChatGPT and fine-tuned this model and uh, released it. But it's not available for commercial use. Other is Lutheria's AI uh, GPT Neo, GPT Neo X and GPT J. These models have been crafted and made available to the public as open source versions of GPT-3. Since GPT-3, OpenAI didn't release in public. These models from Lutheria's AI, GPT-Neo, GPT-Neo X and GPT-J were marketed as the open source versions of GPT-3. They are trained on mighty pile dataset, a collection of linguistic data source that spans across different domains, making them versatile and adapted to various natural language processing tasks. Next is Bloom. Bloom is world's largest open uh, source language model. It was presented by Hugging Face team. It was developed in collaborative efforts with thousands of brilliant minds across the globe and Bloom was born. Next is Dolly uh, from Databricks. Databricks Dolly, it's a model, first open source model for commercial use and without requiring any API access or data sharing with third parties. It's based on Lutheria's AI's model and fine tunes on 15,000 high quality human generated prompt responses, question answers which were authored by 5000 Databricks employees. So basically it's a crowdsourced data set, it's fine tuned on and even the data set is also made available for public. So these are some of the open source LLMs which are available which you can try and uh, the list is growing every single day. Next question is how to use this open source LLMs which I have shown right. So for that you can go to the Hugging Face uh, website 
and uh, you can see there are models you can uh, go use these models also you can search here directly for example dolly if i have to go to dolly i can go there and then it, there are different models are available i have selected the 12 billion one and this is how i can install it right and also the hugging face open source alternative to chat gpt hugging chat chat is available you can uh, use it to do how are you same things ask same type of questions you do to chat gpt but there is the open source version released by hugging face okay it's the answer and so on so till now we have seen some of the open source llms that are openly available that we can use and also some of the uh, ugly or bad part of or some of the limitations that llms currently have which can be factual error biases it can be hallucinations it can be factual errors or harmful information but on the other side on the other side there are multiple benefits that this llms uh, offers and we will look at some of them there are multiple benefits of conversational llms uh, that have the potential to revolutionize the way we interact with machines although the benefits are extensive here are a few examples of use cases that highlight their advantages some of them are like content creation text summarization and language translation building virtual assistant to power businesses as a coding assistant as a research assistant and to personalize education let's look at all of them one by one so content creation conversational llms are useful tool to generate effective content simply provide a rough outline of the desired topic along with the relevant keywords and llm will take care of the rest producing engaging content will with carefully crafted language conversational llms can be utilized to produce content that can be tweaked and adjusted to different social media platforms such as linkedin youtube and twitter this saves a considerable amount of time that would otherwise have taken a lot of time in tailoring content uh, to meet word limits or other specific platform requirements right we can just say that this is our content make it make a post for linkedin twitter and youtube and it will do that uh, pretty well instead of we spending time to meet the platform requirement and also it hints that these are some possible use case apps or businesses that can create on uh, utilizing content creation capability of llms grammarly is one such example conversational llms can also prove to be valuable in content marketing where the words used can have significant impact on user and using them can be beneficial so for the last video i will add the link of that in description section where i created uh, the training process and architecture of chat gpt i uh, posted in chat gpt that create a linkedin post for me for the video on llms that i will release tomorrow i will cover the architecture and its training process so it created this nice content exciting news tomorrow i will be releasing a video on llms and their training process i will be covering essential of the cutting edge technology and so on so in this way wonderful content can be created using chat gpt Next is text summarization and language translation. Text summarization, conversational LMS can be used for text summarization. Given a long document, ChatGPT like system can extract the most important sentences or key phrases and generate a summary that captures the essence of the document. They can be used for quickly summarizing long reports, news articles or research papers and ask questions on top of it. So these are some possible use cases we can build on top of LMS on text summarization as well and question answering. Uh, next is language translation chat gpt like system can be used to translate text from one language to another this capability can indeed be used in variety of applications like chatbots language learning apps and more so creating vernacular use cases apps and businesses around it the same example which i gave where i asked linkedin to create uh, where, where i asked chat gpt to create a linkedin post for me i asked it to translate in hindi also and it did a beautiful job utsah janak samachar kal main llm model par video release karunga and so on so it can perform that language translation text summarization content creation pretty well and we can create businesses around it next is virtual assistant to power businesses conversational llms exhibit remarkable capability in comprehending the user intent primarily due to their extensive training on vast corpus of internet data they are really good at recalling the context that what we are talking about and generate appropriate responses leveraging this capabilities the virtual assistant can be developed that can be customized to a specific requirement of a business for example for e-commerce business the virtual assistant can assist users in identifying their requirements and suggesting the suitable products they can buy while for a travel business the assistant can help user plan their vacation and make bookings 
Similarly, in case of educational business, the virtual assistant can guide users to the right courses and help them resolve their queries. So this is an example, a e-commerce chatbot that I created and linked with the website. So you can see that I am an e-commerce assistant, how can I assess you? I said I want dog colors. It asks which type of colors and dog colors are a great choices. We have different variety, basic color, uh, GPS colors, LED colors, spike colors. I said the fifth one, it says great choice and uh, do you have any further requirement or clarity on top of it and then once I know the intent, I can just uh, join it to my inventory data uh, and also my taxonomy data and serve the user. I will create a detailed video on how I created this e-commerce chatbot and linked it with my uh, inventory and taxonomy and serve the user. So stay tuned. Uh, so yes, uh, conversational AI like ChatGPT can created can be used to create this virtual assistant which can be vernacular they can serve in multiple languages next is coding assistant conversational LMS like ChatGPT can also be used as coding assistant it has shown that it has great understanding of coding languages as well and it can help tasks such as auto completing code suggesting codes identifying errors in code some programming text editors and IDs integrated development environments have already incorporated AI assisted coding features uh, in their products or offerings which are powered by models like GPT. LLMs can also be trained and fine-tuned on a specific programming language or framework to provide more specialized assistance. And next two use cases are my favorite. First is the education, personalized learning. Interacting with conversational LLMs like ChatGPT provides the student with the opportunity to overcome the fear or hesitation of asking questions even if they perceive them as potentially foolish or not very important question but still they can ask uh, ChatGPT all the questions no matter how many times through asking questions seeking clarifications through examples and delving into the intricacies of a topic individuals can personalize their education experience this accessibility of intelligent resource has the potential to democratize education and research fostering a more creative and informed population so this will democratize the education for all and i will give an example why is it so good at education I asked it what is temperature parameter in this large language models. It gave me the explanation that when the temperature parameter is low, it's less creative. It provides more uh, uh, coherent text while when the temperature parameter is high, it is more creative and, and can provide interesting uh, responses. So that is what it uh, told me. But I didn't understand how it does that. Right? right. So I asked it example to show the mathematics how temperature parameter works. And it showed me the entire mathematics that this is the softmax function one temperature parameter is added in the denominator and when the temperature parameter is low we can see that words which had higher score have more probability to occur but as i make the temperature higher the probability become it starts becoming uh, the difference in the probability becomes less uh, among words and more creative words or more, more number of words can appear in the response and that is how the temperature parameter works uh, actually through in code and through mathematics so we can ask this type of questions, show me the mathematics, show me an example and we can learn. So text, chat GPT kind of conversational AI has that capability to uh, make students ask questions, learn through examples and so on. So it will definitely transform the education system. Next is research assistant. Conversational LLMs like chat GPT also has the potential to assist researchers in multiple ways. First of all, help them understand complex concepts and secondly, generate ideas or solutions related to the sub problems of their research. For in my personal experience, when I was doing some research, I found ChatGPT very helpful in resolving an issue related to the equation of the plane while implementing a version of local sensitive hashing. I was implementing local sensitive hashing, which is like uh, helpful in approximate nearest neighbor search. So the problem I was stuck with, I want I had k multi-dimensional points uh, having 32 dimension, and I was interested in determining the equation of the plane that contains these points. What method can be utilized to a certain the equation of the plane. This is the question I asked it that I have k dimensional points and what methods can I use to find the equation of the plane and beautifully it gives me multiple uh, ideas that can be used. One is linear regression, second is PCA, singular value decomposition or we can use geometric methods like finding the equation of uh, the plane and uh, uh, finding the normal vector to the plane and then finding the equation of the plane. I found the linear regression was the easiest and I implemented that. So in this way it can not just help researchers to understand a complex concept but also innovate ideas or solutions of some sub problems of their uh, research. Uh, that's it in this video. Hope you like the video. We covered some of the good, bad and uglies of 
conversational AI. Some of the limitations and biases they suffer from some of the open source LLMs, those are available, and some of the huge benefits of using this uh, uh, conversational AI like text summarization as a research assistant, coding assistant, in revolutionizing the education system, and so on. Um, there will be more videos in this LLM series. Please like and subscribe uh, and stay tuned for more such updates. Bye.